Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. A listener from Victoria, British Columbia, sent us a listing. This is from... Uh, it's not Craigslist. It's, it's like an equivalent of Craigslist in Canada. Called usedvictoria.com. And here is what it says. The headline on it is, Single Mom Needing Christmas Help. Here is the, uh, here is the description. Hi, I am a new single mother. And I'm struggling this Christmas because I don't have much money. Because I'm on social assistance right now. I have a five-month-old baby boy, and I was looking for some help with Christmas time, and I'm wanting to try and make it special for him. It's hard when you don't have any family to help out, because it's his first one. If you could possibly help out, that would be nice. She then gives her hotmail address, and also her home telephone number. She says, anything would help. Is anybody feeling sorry for her? Anybody? I mean, first of all, dear, why'd you open your legs to a guy who, uh, you know, knocked you up and then bolted? And why should anybody else, who's not responsible for your little accident, your little mistake, your little mishap, your little crumb cruncher, why should they help you? Why should anybody help you? I mean, this doesn't make any sense at all. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. I'm a big fan of Christmas. But um, the people I like to give to at Christmas are good friends. People I know who are down on their luck. People who try hard, and uh, no matter how much they... Uh, they try, no matter how hard they try. They just can't stay ahead of the game. But uh, people who do things that are overtly stupid like that, you just go out there and get knocked up and then go ahead and have the baby they can't afford to have, I don't feel any sympathy for them, especially complete strangers. I have no sympathy for them at all. None. And I don't see why I should. Uh, any guy who sends this woman money or gifts or anything is, is a fool. Don't you think? A toll-free telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Keisha on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh-huh. Yes. Hi, yes. Um, I personally think that she should have made a better judgment before she decided to have the baby, right. whether she chose a trifling man or not at the time of sex, she still had a choice at the time of birth. But because she decided to go through with it, I think the responsibility is hers. But at the same time, as a humanitarian and knowing that what she's going through as an individual, as a person, and as a woman, regardless... She put herself she, through it. Well, she put herself through it, but he put himself in it, basically. Well, you know what? If, if nobody sends her money, she won't do it again, will she? I agree. I, I totally agree. I mean, and so anybody who sends her money is an idiot. No, anybody who sends anybody money is thinking of themselves and how they can help the next and the next person. Why would you want to help somebody like this? Okay, I go downtown L.A. and I volunteer my time to feed the homeless. Does that mean I'm a selfish person because I decide to give time? Or I'm, no, I'm not talking about people being selfish uh, okay, by giving. Well, I'm saying again, they're you're stupid to give to somebody who who pokes themselves in the eye. Well, you're stupid to have sex with somebody who's not going to take care of their responsibility. Well, uh, yes, she is. Consequences, and you're stupid to. Well, there are consequences, and I think she should suffer the consequences. Okay, well, what about the father? He going and he that's her problem. She she knows who he is. I don't even know who the father is. That's her problem. Okay, but and it the ain't guy no disappeared. Who chose this guy to to allow her to get knocked up? Hey, I said I agree, but at the same time, you may not have known. Maybe he wasn't trifling at the time. Maybe she gave him ultimatum. Maybe he got scared. Well, whatever happened, it, you know what? I didn't cause the problem, and therefore, I'm not going to be the solution. 
No, you don't have to be a solution. And you nobody else should either. You cannot be a help at all. And right now you're no. not being a help at all by calling her stupid. Uh, no, I, I, again, I, anybody who helps okay, her is stupid. just as far. I think anybody who helps her is stupid. Okay, so if anybody help her, and not help her, but let's say help the baby, you know, if someone no, no, wants not to... Not my problem. Money, not baby. my problem. So if it's she not could have given the baby up for adoption. She could have had an abortion. She could have. And it's not my responsibility, and it's not anybody else's either. Would you agree that he put himself in that position as well? Who did? The baby daddy. I don't know who he is. So if he was a single father... She, you know what? She should have chosen better. Before she had sex without birth control, she should have chosen better. I agree, because you still... Now she has to, to suffer the consequences. If he was a single father with that out, would this uh, outcome still be the same? I really don't care about who the father of this child is. No, Not I'm my problem. If he had the responsibility of taking care of that that's child. That's her problem, to. It's her problem no, to enforce that. Not mine. Like, let's say she was like the dad of trying to put ass and left. Let's say that she gave him the baby and now he had that ad out. Would you still Again, I know. I wouldn't help a man or a woman who puts an ad like that. No. No, I wouldn't. Okay. Well, Who's coaching you over there? I'm sorry? Who's coaching you on what to say oh, over there? I have a, my sister. We both... Well, tell your sister family. to get it by a telephone and call in on her own. This is your call now. I'm sorry? Your sister should not be coaching you. You should be making oh, your own comments. She introduced me to your show, so now she's like... Well, oh, yeah. then yeah. she should pick up the phone and dial in herself, but now you're on the phone. Okay, so with me being on the phone, I'm going to say this. I think that there are a lot... And I've just started listening to your show since last week, that a lot of points that you make... Some are valid. Some are very, very valid. I think that a lot of women, we should definitely take responsibility for ourselves and don't allow someone to dictate. Just like the last call when the woman felt like, you know, they deserve alimony, child support, this, this, this. I agree with some things. I disagree with some things. And this is one of the things I agree with. I think that women should take responsibility for her child. I, I'm going to just put it out there. I am a single parent. I work 40 hours plus a week. I don't get any help from my baby's father, but I refuse to take him to court because my child is still supported through me, and I don't look for anything but God to take care of my bills and my business. But I think there are some people that lean on the crutch of assistance of others. Well, that, then why family. should we help them? They lean on others because others are stupid enough to help them. Uh, I... Some people are not stupid enough. Like I said, if I was... Well, I know I'm not. Yeah, okay, then that's your... Point. I wouldn't send but 10 cents to this woman. I wouldn't send a penny. There should just be negative a penny, but, but that's by you, not by everyone else. Well, I, like I, I, anybody who sends this woman money is stupid. That's like the hurricane people. People who volunteer who gave their money. Does that make them stupid because they wanted to put the, they wanted to help? They felt themselves in a position like that at some time and they know where someone's coming from, so they feel like this is their way of giving back. I mean, that's an individual choice to volunteer or to donate. Well, no, it's, a, it's an individual want. choice, but I can have an opinion about the people who do oh, it. Definitely, you can. So if you chose not to, that's fine, but to call someone else. Any, you know, anybody went to the Astrodome and offered to help, and people said, I don't like the food you're bringing. They you, you got what you paid for, folks. Exactly. So you can either return it or walk away. And basically, you're walking away. That's totally fine, but to call someone else stupid. And I think everybody should walk away. If everybody walked away, women wouldn't do these things. If everybody walked away, there'd be a whole lot of men acting like you are. Now, there, you there ought to be more men acting like I do, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Katie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Okay, Katie. You know what? I'm a slut. You want to give me some money? I no. think I should be rewarded because I don't have a kid. I didn't make a mistake and have a kid, so I think that I should be put on the same hotline thing that she's on, and no. I should be. They should buy me. It's called usedvictoria.com. Go ahead and post your own notice. <laughs> yeah, but don't you think that I should be rewarded? I'm not stupid. I'm not draining society with extra kids. Yeah. Shouldn't they reward me? I, I, I think this is an outrageous <laughs> email, and why anybody would send money to somebody like that is beyond me. I know. I think I deserve it more than she does. Don't you think? Yeah, I'm, if, if, put it this way. I don't think anyone deserves it, but I'd, I'd give it to you before I'd give it to her. And I wouldn't give it to you. Sue, hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? I'm okay. You know what? First of all, this baby is five months old, so truly, what is he going to remember from this Christmas anyway? That's right. I, I have two kids with my husband, and for our kids' first Christmases, I don't think we bought them all that much stuff just because they weren't going to remember it. Right. And, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I just think that if the baby needed food or something, like that's something that maybe you ask others for help with. But to have Christmas presents to make a nice Christmas for a five-month-old, I, I just think that it's 
I don't know. I think the money's going to her. That's where it's going. Well, yeah, and she's just trying to tug on people's heartstrings. I mean, around the holidays, you know, we all want to try the, you know, the spirit of giving, like you said, people that you care about, people truly in need, so on and so forth. And, I, you know, I just think it's lame to, like, you know, pony up her baby to say, oh, I have a five-month-old who needs a nice Christmas. It's just, it's so opportunistic, and I just, I don't, I don't agree with it. I think you're right about that. Tom Likes. 1-800-5-800-866. Tom Likes. 1-800-5-800-TOM. 800 5800 That's a good slogan for our show. Better than a fatal accident. The Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Sarah on the Tom Likes Show. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Great. I was just calling in to say, um, I just listened to you read that email out loud, and uh, I didn't hear anything in that email about what happened to that baby's father. No, because uh, my oh, guess, yeah. this girl is the biggest slut in uh, Canada and has no idea who the father is, much less where he is. Well, you know that baby's father was a firefighter and got killed in a burning building, and even if he was... It's not my he, problem. He just left. Not well, my not problem. Because he lied to her? And not he my off. problem. Well, then is anything your problem? By the way, the term, I am a new single mother, it doesn't say I'm a widow. It says I'm a new single mother. So she was she was lied to by her scumbag husband. Uh, why do you even assume that? Well, because I don't think we can automatically assume that. I'm she's automatically good. assuming it. But and I'm not sending money to any stranger who puts an ad on the Internet looking for money. Why would you send money to anybody? If you're not I, do, help I don't. You, I don't help anybody. I don't. I, you know who I give money, you know I give money to, Big Mouth? I, I give it to uh, people I know who are in need. And these are people, by the way, will you turn the radio off, by the way? I know Dean told you to do it. Will you do it now, please? Yeah, it's off. Leave it off. Completely. It's completely off. Right. People who I know are working hard, not getting knocked up. You don't know she's not working hard. I don't care if she is or she isn't. I say people. a five-month-old baby. Will you like listen that. to what I'm saying and let me finish a goddamn sentence? If you interrupt me again, I'll put you on hold until I finish. I'm the boss here. You talk to your boyfriend like that. You don't talk to me like that. The people I help are people I know who are working hard, who don't do stupid things like get knocked up and have children they can't afford. Anyone who does that, I don't give them anything. Because I don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. Period. I don't I don't think that you can say that helping someone who needs help is... Yes, it is. Helping somebody who got knocked up at 20 years old or whatever and uh, has no father around, that is uh, not my problem. By helping people like that, you're encouraging more behavior like that, and I refuse to do it. Five months ago, maybe she was in a position, in a stable relationship with someone... That was her problem. You know what? Her problem. She chose wrong. Not my problem. Well, what was that website you said it was on again? I think uh, it might be a good idea to, for me to set some money. You think it's a bad idea, but I think maybe I, I will. I told you what it's called, usedvictoria.com. Okay, sounds good. Have fun there. 1-800-5800-TOM. Gus on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, she's crazy. Which one, the caller or the uh, person with them. you? Yeah. Both of them. If I was a crack user and I needed my kid to have a Christmas, you know, <laughs> send me some money. Uh, well, you know, if I'm a crack user, why would I waste money having a kid? Exactly. And if, and if she can email you, have her sell her, her computer. Good idea. <laughs> and my kid needs a Christmas. So a By the way, uh, I, I, I know she's poor because it appears her keyboard doesn't have a period. <laughs> or a caps lock key because ca it's all in caps with no periods. Yeah. Uh, that's just too one bad. big run-on sentence by some ignorant breeder. <laughs> well, boo hoo hoo, Tom, you know? Yeah, I know. Cry me a river. I'm weeping. <laughs> All right, Tom. Pull me up. Here you go, Gus. <laughs> Vanessa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi, I'm calling because I went through a situation where my husband worked construction and when it rained last year, right. he got laid off and I tried to go to the government for assistance. I tried every program possible. We ended up homeless and we could never get assistance unless I was either knocked up or we were on drugs. And well, it does piss me off that people who just have babies and babies and babies are getting assistance. 
when they're a lot of times not really working. Well, I'm certainly not going to voluntarily give any. I'm already paying uh, more in taxes than most people make in a year. Exactly. Well, I'm not we sending were any money to somebody like this. Yep. So anyway, I just wanted to make that comment because two hardworking people who are just trying to struggle through life are not getting any type of uh, benefit when it's a, a legitimate reason other than reproducing. No doubt about it, Vanessa. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jesse on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Jesse. I am about sick and tired of people interrupting you. You are Uncle Tom. They need to shut their mouth and let you speak. When they are calling in right. and you're trying to address them, they just need to shut their friggin' mouth. Speak when spoken to. Absolutely, Tom. You're the best. Thank you, Jesse. God bless, buddy. Appreciate the call. Sam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. All I gotta say is this, this woman a couple of calls back sitting there comparing ch uh, childbirth to hurricanes. Right. Something we have all the control in the world over versus something we have no control over. That's exactly right. And of course, any one of us would probably be more apt to. Uh, I'm sure if New Orleans could go to a, a, a clinic and pay three hundred and fifty dollars to abort a hurricane, they would. Oh, <laughs> time and time again. That's right. All right, Tom, you take care of yourself. Go ahead and blow me up with a bong hit. Here you go, Sam. <coughs> Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm okay, Jason. Good to hear it. Yeah, I personally take offense at this, uh, this female caller here a couple minutes ago. Uh, if this... See, if this single mother with the coin was a single father, nobody would even bat an eye and think twice about sending money. That's because right. she has a vagina, everybody has to go out of their way to help her. To fill it, yeah, with cash. Yeah, I mean, give me a break. I'm sorry, but, you know, grab, grab your package, you know, and move out and, you know, go on with life. That's it. Done. And in the subject. Guys do it all the time. I, by my, I am know an individual who is a single father and uh, is doing a very good job by himself without asking for assistance from anybody. Good point, Jason. Jamie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, Tom, I um, heard a statistic that it costs $184,000 in the 18 years that you raised your kid, and I just don't understand why women you know, make that investment before they're financially ready. I think that when you look at it, having a child, you have Because to they expect men to pick up the tab. And it's so ridiculous. Like, you can never, you can't rely on a man. And that's because why should a man take care of a woman? I listen to your show, and I'm aware of that. That, you know, like, men don't want to take care of a single mom. And if you're not going to be married and having the kids, then you as a woman need to make sure that you're financially capable of supporting yourself and your child. And birth control is free. I've been on birth control for eight years, and the state would rather pay for me to be on birth control than for me to have a baby. And I think that's a good investment, you know, that the taxpayers make. But this girl's stupid, and if we contribute to her, then we're just perpetuating, you know, having indigent people having babies and it's just it's creating a welfare society no. it's ridiculous you're absolutely right jamie sammy on the tom like his show hello tom how are you i'm okay sammy okay we need to send this bitch to 99 cent store and have her buy 10 pieces of gifts and make it a special <laughs> christmas for her baby <laughs> <laughs> does she need to buy a pony or an xbox for this kid yeah the kid's five months old five months old what is she gonna get for her <laughs> That's just stupid, Tommy. Hey, I have a special request. I'm not sure it's been done before or not. Uh, Judging from the, the level of uh, trailer trash we're dealing with, maybe the kid's first pack of cigarettes. I'm sure. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, two packs of it. That's right. Uh, Tom, take me out Katrina style if you have something to put together. Oh, we got some wind or rain or something very there. Very tasteless, though. Very, we, very tasteless. We got something here. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello, John. This, this is John. I work down here in San Diego. I determine Cal works for cash assistance for single mothers and parents in need. Uh huh. Now, a lot of these women they have a time limit that they can be on aid. They have a sixty month time limit. But the thing is, when the time's running out, they're going to not be helped anymore. So what do they do? They have another kid. So that kid can be aided. And they have to work the system. And I see it every day. 
and see me myself, I'm married. What I strike one, I'm already out. I'm out of the game. They wouldn't do it if we would just take the kid and put it up for adoption. Because I, I see having children you can't afford as being a form of child abuse. You know, and you're, and you're right. It's, it's definitely child abuse, especially is when they leave the guy, and the guy, let's just say, for instance, the guy is in the military, he's a lieutenant. The guy has full sole custody, so she can't get aid for that child. But what does she do? She goes to the court, and a week later, she has, saying, she has 50% custody. She is a loser, but still she gets custody of these kids. And see, that's why I'm married. I have two kids, and I didn't leave her. It's cheaper to keep her. Uh, many many people say that, John. Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, um, what's up, buddy? Not much, Carlos. All right, man. Listen, I, I got to speak out, man. Um, you know, I live in the San Fernando Valley, yeah. and it's an ongoing epidemic, man. I mean, as long as these bitches keep having babies, man, it's it, it's a it's an ongoing cycle, man. It's just, you know, they're going to be on welfare, and like you just said, you got it right on the money, man. It's just a form of child abuse, man. Uh, you know, I, I go way back, uh, you know, I'm 28 right now, but, you know, I have a friend who has four sisters, and, and they range from 18 to 14, and they all have kids now, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just, uh, it's uh, it's not a good thing, man, for the kids and for all the taxpayers out here who are busting their asses working, and, you know, we need to provide for these people. They need to get off their ass and get an effing job, man. No, I agree with you, Carlos. Thank you for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's a good slogan for our show. Better than a fatal accident. The Tom Likas Show. Los Angeles. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is Will. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Will. How you doing? Do you care, Will? Yes, I do. Doing great. You are my Uncle Tom. You are the uncle I never had. I had a dad. I have a dad. Uh, excuse me, the gentleman Jack is talking to me. Oh, I see. Um, um, my one day off a week. Uh, that we just got you after, uh, um, what's his name in Dallas? Uh, Russ Barton. Yeah, that's him. I love that man. That, who doesn't? Uh, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear you talking about, uh, our welfare mothers and, uh, uh, welfare and all that other good. Or these yeah. single mothers putting ads on the internet asking people to send money. Oh, give me a break. My ex-wife is a welfare mother. Ugh. I tell you what, I'm paying child support for two kids that apparently aren't mine. I live in Michigan, a liberal state. Um, I've got three herniated discs in my neck and one in my back and stuff. Where, you know, my shoulder's messed up, my, my neck is, my, you know. And uh, alcohol kills the pain. I'm still paying for, you know, child support for this stuff. And, uh... Uh, something's got to be done. Yeah. No. I mean, she bought a house. Wasn't working. Bought a house through um, uh, Habitat for Humanity. I work uh, six days a week, 12 plus hours a day. I can't buy a house right now. Something's uh -huh. wrong with this system. No doubt about it. But um, I'm about done now. I love your show. Uh, I'm over your demographic, but uh, you tell it like it is. Uh, I'm going to hang up and start drinking some more. Sounds good to me, Will. Good luck. Have a great night. This is Greg in Parkland, Oregon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How are you? Doing okay, Greg. Good. I'm just calling about that lady in um, Canada. Yeah. Um, feel no heartache, no pain for her at all. I'm a single father myself. I got custody of both of my kids. I, I came up here to Oregon from uh, Arizona. Not a job, one, nothing. Didn't sponge out, buddy. I worked full time out at the Hillsborough Airport. We had a lot of excitement today, I'm sure, as you know. Yes, I do. <laughs> and um, I'm glad that plane landed safely. Uh, another one with the uh, landing gear all screwed up. Right. right. It, was, it was scary, and there was, you, you wouldn't believe how many, you know, what the media frenzy was out there today. Oh, I would. 
But uh, as far as that lady goes, I mean, come on. I mean, I came up here with no job, didn't know anybody up here, and uh, got a job out here supporting my two kids. I've been doing it great for going on three years now. You know, their mother doesn't pay child support, but my hand's not out at all. My my hand's out working my butt off is what I'm doing. Well, sounds good to me, Greg. I'm proud of you. Mac on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's okay, Mac. Hey, you know, I'm listening to everything, and I'm glad we're all discussing these social issues, but I think we're really missing the good point, and I think there's a uh, capitalist gain right here to be made from this. If we search the web and uh, find more websites like this, and we, we just go ahead and pull them all together, I think we can uh, start pipping these women out and really start making a good, uh, good dime off of them. <laughs> Think about that, Tommy. <laughs> well, you can start with this one, usedvictoria.com. That's where she is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe she's got a friend. Maybe she's got like six or eight friends. No, no doubt she does. They all have tattoos. They all smoke Marlboros. Yeah. Yeah, we can make you know make T-shirts. We can pimp them out. We can you know make bongs with their names on it. We can, we've got a lot of things we can really do with this, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I've got okay. her phone number. I feel like calling her up. Oh, maybe, yeah. If you get her number... Hey, Dean, why don't you get the uh, area code for Victoria, British Columbia? Okay. Uh, and then I would, maybe we'll try to call her up. Okay, let's do that. That'll be fun. <laughs> now, we don't have to tell you. We'll just call her up. Yeah. We don't have to, hey. By the way, her name is not here, but we have her phone number. Okay. So, yeah, Dean will get her area code, and then we'll call her up. Okay, that sounds good. Maybe she's got two sisters. <laughs> I bet, so? bet she does. I bet she does. It's... You know, they all run together like wild pigs. Probably all get knocked up together. (laughs) Well, appreciate it, Tom. Thanks a lot, buddy. Mac, thank you. Here's David in Portland on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going in Portland there, David? Not bad. Not bad at all. A lot of pork out there? A lot of what? A lot of pork. Well, you know, I I, I don't think that uh, spending in this country is uh, that. I worry more about foreign spending. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Oh. You you see, kind of I wasn't referring to congressional spending, but go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I think that this woman, I don't think that people should necessarily give this woman money, but I am worried a lot about the culture of selfishness in this country. The people think that, you know, when they get taxed, that that money belongs to them and the government's taking their money. You see, you know, we live in a country where we get roads and we get services and we get education and we get, you know, the army and we get all sorts of stuff for what we do. And when people complain about how much they're taxed and what it goes to and everything, people forget that they benefit from all the services in this country. You know, and uh, I worry that, you know, people look at people receiving welfare and they say, well, why is my money going to them? You know, because if we help people get on their feet and we help them, you know, lift themselves up, well, then we're, you know, that we're, we're taking care of society and it makes all of society better. Well, one way to keep this woman on her feet is put a cork in it. Uh, then she'd be on her feet. If she was on her feet in the first place, this it's wouldn't have happened. Kids, what about the kids? It's not their fault they're in that situation. But the point is we should not be giving women incentives to create kids they can't afford in the first place. You know, we should help. You're right. We should help. Step them one. I mean, we, should, we should help them. Anyone who has a child who can't afford it, that child is taken away and put up for adoption. That's it. Well, the adoption system is already overloaded. No, no, I mean, it's not overloaded. In fact, uh, people are going to. Uh, why did, did Angelina Jolie go to Africa to adopt a child? Well, you know, what? Well, you say the adoption system, system is overloaded. That's because you're trying to force people to adopt children with AIDS and retardation. Uh, no, no, no. But if they want children without birth defects or if they want white kids or whatever, they have to go to Russia to get them. You're right that white kids, you know, they get adopted very quickly. But, you know, African American children, they don't get adopted very quickly. And the adopt, you know. You know, That's not my point. Yeah, we got plenty of uh, the white children because there's a lot of trailer trash out there, uh, like uh, probably this woman giving birth, and uh, those children should be taken away. By the way, I think if you made that the policy, there'd be a lot less unwanted pregnancies, a lot less children being born this way. I think there's a middle ground. You know, I think there's a way that we can help people who are in that situation in the, such a way that they have to... I, I consider it child abuse to be allowing people like this to give birth to children they can't afford. Well, you can't judge every person. I, I mean, you know, you don't... Yes, I can. Well, the system has to be created in such a way that, you know... You if you can can't afford to have children, you shouldn't be having children. Because that child deserves to eat and have clothing and a place to live and an education. Well, you know... 
think about Katrina victims. You know, people can find themselves in situations all the time where they were uh, providing for themselves, where they're uh, productive members of society. Let's be That's honest. Right. Most people in the Katrina situation put themselves in the Katrina situation. And San Francisco's in the earthquake zone, and uh, we didn't live next to a volcano, and the whole eastern seaboard could get wiped out by a tsunami. That could That's happen. That's why we have to take care of... But the point is, when people make stupid... Look, it's one thing to be a victim of something that happens that you couldn't predict. But uh, laying down, spreading your legs, and having sex without birth control, and then getting knocked up, that's not a surprise. It's only a surprise to the ignorant. You, you can't necessarily uh, control... Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. There's 11 forms of birth control for women. There's one for men. On top of that, there's RU486, morning after pills, and abortion. Yes, there is. All legal. Yes, and, and you know... And so they should be used unless you can afford to raise that child, period. What I'm saying is maybe she could have afforded it initially and then something... Well, then, you know what, then that child ought to be heading off somewhere else where people can afford to take care of it. Let me, let me explain about the, 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 the more about the uh, culture of selfishness, like the bankruptcy bill that just recently passed. Why, why, why is that selfishness, by the way? I, you know, you, what you're defending is immorality. Uh, people oh, who, no. who borrow money, they have no intention of paying back. That's completely immoral. I'm talking about people who have medical problems, like catastrophic medical problems, who find themselves in hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, and they need to buy groceries and stuff, yeah. and then they fill up... How many of these people are buying cruises and uh, plasma screens when they should have been paying for medical insurance? No doubt. No doubt, Tom, but, you know, there was an amendment that was proposed by the Democrats to... I understand all that. ...specific medical problems, and the Republicans voted it down. I understand so I'm that. to give the cruise guys... But I also happen to believe that most of Americans are uh, completely immoral when it comes to money and credit. They borrow money with no idea if they can ever pay it back and not a care in the world about paying it back because we have the most lax bankruptcy laws in the world. But don't the credit card companies make their money off the interest and that's what you're paying? For? When you pay interest, you're paying for their risk. No, when you pay interest, you're paying uh, the profits of the bank. That's what you're paying. And why do they give a different interest rate to people who have lower credit they, but Guess what? You don't have to apply for credit you can't afford. You don't have to take credit cards you don't need. You don't have to do it. No, you don't have to, but they solicit them to people who and are high risk. As a, all they have to say is no. But don't you receive a higher... Uh, Doesn't matter. All they have to say is no. No, I can't afford to borrow money because I can't afford to pay it back. But credit cards charge you for the risk. And you That's not the point. That. If, if, the, the, whether they charge you for the risk or not, you still are obligated to pay the money back. And you should not, be obligated not, not to pay you, it back. Not if you declare bankruptcy until now. Well, and again, I, I don't think it should be so easy for people to get out of paying their debts. Why should they get, get it from both ends? Why should they charge you for their risk and then... You have every right to say no to the bank. I don't want to borrow from you. The interest rate is too high. They have every right to say that. Well, you know, and I don't like people who run up their credit cards and just, you know, run now, off. I, by the way, you know why I don't like it? Because I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> well, you know, you got a point. And, you, you know, I don't want to pay for people who are just, you know, going out there and doing this on purpose. But I, I don't want to pay for anybody who, who borrows money they can't afford to pay back. People don't know if they're going to have a catastrophic medical. Oh, uh, come on. You know what? They should be prepared for that. Oh. They should have insurance, and they should have money put away before they buy luxuries for themselves. You know These are the building blocks of your life, and if you can't afford to do that, uh, then you're spending too much on other stuff. You know, I followed, my mom actually went through this. She had cancer, and she could. She worked her entire life. She had a good job. She made lots of money, and uh, she had her cancer paid for, and then she uh, was dropped off the insurance because now she was too high risk. So part of the culture of selfishness I'm talking about is we should say we should take care of people who are sick in our country because you know what's immoral? It's immoral to profit off the suffrage of others. Uh, actually, it's not. Uh, that's business. No, 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 no. Sure it is. Why do you, what do you think drug companies do? That's, that's my point. What do drug companies do? That's, their, that's the business they're in. I think they should be non-profits. Oh, <laughs> but then who is... Got, then, uh, if they're non-profit... Uh, what company is going to spend money developing drugs if they can't make a profit? Everybody in the company still makes money in a non-profit, Tom. Uh, it's just the pal, company itself does You don't understand what a risk it is to develop drugs. I own, through a mutual fund, uh, shares in several health care companies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, including some of the most notorious ones like Merck and Pfizer and what have you.
Mm -hmm. And these companies uh, develop drugs because there's profit to be made. And if there's no profit to be made, they won't be doing it. I just want to announce to all the women out there that there's the image of Jesus on my penis. And I'll be standing out of the parking lot after the show. If you want to come down here and get a look, I'm going to be unzipping my fly. And then I expect you all to get on your knees and pray. Better watch it, Tom. You're going to have a big old lineup out there tonight. I know. The Tom Likes Show.